Hey guys, CB Super here today. Um, today we're gonna go over this glitch effect and we're gonna do this all inside of the Fusion tab in DaVinci Resolve 16. Let's go take a look. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is create a new project as Glitch RBG and inside of DaVinci Resolve, over here by master, I'm just gonna create a new bin by right clicking, clicking new bin and I'm just gonna title this footage add another bin and that's going to be my music. I'm going to bring in my music and drop it in Move it to around five seconds. Hit B for blade tool. I'm just going to cut it off right there. Hit A for selection tool. Select it and backspace or delete. And I'm going to come up here, left click on footage just to the right of that, right click, come down to import media, and I'm just going to grab this uh, breakdance footage. Trim that back a little bit just so it's about five seconds long. And um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come over to the generators and bring that right out onto the timeline. I'm going to click on that solid color layer, right click, come up to new compound clip, not even going to bother naming it, and then click on it again, right click and hit new fusion clip. And now we're gonna be working with that actual clip. Just make sure that the playhead is touching this clip and then come over to the Fusion tab. All right, before we actually go over, one thing I wanna do, I'm gonna just go ahead and, so I'm just gonna click on this to make this invisible for now. And I wanna go through this really quickly and just find one good beat where I want to animate this text and it's gonna create that RGB effect. All right, now one way to do this a little bit easier is I can actually come over here and I wanna see the, the waveform. First thing I can do is, uh, this is our timeline view options. I can come over here and I can just click on this audio waveforms button and then come down here and I can actually see now where my waveforms are gonna be. So now I can just come right to where I know that there's a heavy hit. Now when I, I can either hit a marker by pressing the M key and that'll create a marker there or I can just, from where the playhead is right now, I can click back onto my fusion clip. Um, now I know that right at frame 26 is where I want the center. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start building my node tree. Um, the first thing I know that I'm gonna want is I'm gonna want a text. And inside this text, I'm just gonna call it Dan. I'm gonna go ahead and connect a viewer by pressing one so that it loads it up into this first viewer here. And I'm just gonna size it up a little bit. That's probably pretty good right there. And if I immediately, if I connect this over here to this media out, I can jump right over here and I can already see what that's doing in my media side here. I'm gonna come back over here and I'm actually going to size this up just a little bit more. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start building out my text. I'm gonna, get in, I'm gonna need a lot of room, so I'm gonna just hit Command and I'm gonna scroll out just a little bit, maybe move this media over here. I actually don't need that, I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. I can also select all these and move them around. I'm gonna come up here to the Arrange Tools and I'm just gonna have it so it snaps to grid. So now when I move things around, they're actually gonna snap in a orderly fashion to the grid lines. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna bring in is I wanna start separating the RGB channels. And in order to do that, I'm gonna need a color Boolean node. So I can just shift space bar, type in BOL, and that's gonna give me a color Boolean tool. I'm gonna go ahead and just bring that in. And I'm just gonna command C, unclick on it, command V twice, so I get two of those. And I'm just gonna disconnect them. And I'm just gonna arrange them here so I can easily get to them. Now this top, I'm gonna actually uh, connect all of them to the background of my text node. And just to see what that's doing, it actually isn't doing anything yet. If you come over here to the right side in the inspector, so where it says to red, we're gonna leave that red foreground, but the green, we're gonna go ahead and change that to black and blue to turn black. So now the red will actually be the only red channel. And in order to keep this all straight in our head, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hit F2 on your keyboard to rename it and just type in red. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and rename all of these really quickly, just so that it's gonna make things a little bit easier as we move along. All right, so green, as you guessed it, come down to the red and I'm gonna turn that to black and I'm gonna turn the blue to black and I'm just scrolling down to find black and I'm gonna do the same thing with blue. I'm gonna turn the red to black and the green to black. 
And now if you come over here to the blue, you'll notice that the blue channel is separated, the green channel is separated, and the red channel is separated. All right, now we know that since we separated these channels, we're also gonna to have to recombine them. And so in order to recombine them, I'm actually gonna to need to grab these, the green and the blue. I can Command C, Command V, and just bring them over here and just kind of line them up because what we're gonna do is we're actually going to take the, the gray node output and we're gonna drop it on the green. And this time it's gonna go into the background and the green is gonna go into the blue background. But we're gonna go into this green node and up where it says operation, we're actually gonna hit add instead of copy. And that's gonna add the green back in. But first we have to grab the green and we actually have to drop it. And it's gonna go into the foreground because the background node output is already taken. And so we're gonna want the foreground to go on top of the background. So we're gonna go ahead and connect the blue to blue, the green to green. And now if you come over to the blue and you hit the number two or you drop it on the background here, you'll notice that once we hit this into add, we now have our white text back again. Now that we've got our pipeline set up, we're gonna just do just a little bit of cleanup really quickly. One thing you can do is if you hold down the option key and you click on your node line, it'll create a little node box and you can use that just to kind of keep things a little cleaner inside of DaVinci, inside of the fusion box here. We'll go ahead and connect back in the input. Okay, so we've taken all of the Boolean channels and we've split up all the channels, but now we have to animate them. And in order to animate them, what we're gonna wanna bring in is some transform nodes. Now, first I'm just gonna wanna move this over just a little bit and maybe just size this down just a hair by hitting command and scrolling out just a, just a little bit. I'm gonna wanna bring in a transform node for each of these. So I can go ahead and click on each one of these and just drop in a transform node into each one of these. And again, since I renamed them, I'm just gonna rename them really quickly by hitting the F2 key. And I'm just gonna call this red XF, uh, green XF and blue XF. So now that I have transform nodes on each of my channels, I can come in here and I could just start moving it around. You'll notice when you move it around, it's separating that channel. Um, and if you were to take the green channel and say if I was to push the green channel in another direction, but that's not exactly what we're gonna do. And um, I've, I've played around with this a lot, just trying to make an organic, uh, realistic glitch effect. And to be honest, I found that the best way to do this is to just to randomize the actual position of your node, I think seems to work the best. In order to get some kind of random expression, uh, we could use the actual random expression or we can do it the easy way, which is come into the, uh, the node itself. We're gonna go ahead and right click on where it says center and come down with modify and shake. And what that's gonna do is, if you come over here to the modifiers tab, you'll notice that there is a new setting where you can actually go in here and if I was to just hit play from 26, you'll notice that it moves in a seemingly random seed, right? And I can change that. I usually will bring this up to somewhere in the middle. And now you'll see that it's moving all on its own. I'm not doing any of this. It's just going to move it in like a randomized, you know, mathematical expression. All right. So let me go ahead and command Z that and then come back over here to frame 26. All right. So that's one way we could do it. But I think what I'm going to do is I want this to be faster. And I also want the, the distance for which it moves. I want to control that distance a lot more. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come over here to modifiers. I'm going to change the random seed somewhere in the center and I'm going to unlock this lock XY and I'm going to turn smooth this all the way down. Double click on each one of these and you put 0.5. That's going to uh, that's going to bring it right back to the center, and that's where I usually like to start. Now, this is going to be the very center of my animation, so this is going to be where the animation is at its height. So I like to have like two or three frames in front and two or three frames behind for like a total of anywhere from four to six frames for the entire duration of this effect. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at 26 and I'm going to move forward using the left arrow key one, two, three, and I'm just going to drop a keyframe on all of these attributes. And then I'm gonna go forward one more frame and I'm gonna drop another keyframe. And then I'm gonna come back over to 26 and I'm gonna go forward one, two, three. I'm gonna drop another keyframe and I'm gonna go one more keyframe. All right, and then I'm gonna come back to 26 and this is where I'm gonna go ahead and allow it to have some breathing room. So I'm just gonna move these out a little bit towards their maximums. Okay. 
Now, if I bring it back and I play it, I press a space bar to preview, you'll notice that it has a nice random movement that's not too crazy, but is random enough and fast enough. This is, think of smoothness as speed. If I turn the smoothness all the way up and then play it, it's gonna move very slowly to the point where you're barely gonna notice it. But if I turn it all the way down, it's gonna be a lot faster. Okay, so I like where that's at. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and come down to the green node now, and I'm just gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna come over to the center. I'm gonna right click, come down to modify with over to shake, left click on shake, come over to the modifiers tab up here next to the tools, and I'm gonna unclick lock XY. I'm gonna turn the random seed somewhere in the center and then turn the smoothness all the way down. And I'm just gonna double click on these and type in 0.5. All right, and that's gonna bring it down to the center. Now I'm gonna come to the, uh, I'm gonna go three in front of the left and then create keyframes, go one more, come back to 26, go three behind it, create some keyframes. Go one more, create some more keyframes. And I'm gonna come back to 26 and I'm just gonna spread these out a little bit. Now, the farther you spread it out, the more opportunity it's gonna have to go farther away from your center start point. So if, th if that's what you're going for, then just spread those out a little bit farther. For what I'm going for on this one is just to have it a little bit closer to the center line. All right. And then um, the nice thing about this is that it doesn't create all these keyframes that you have to go in and possibly manipulate later. It actually is just running um, that seed program, kind of like a wiggle expression in After Effects. Um, now I can come over here to the third. So I can click off that and maybe come back here and see what we have. All right, so right now we can already see that we have this nice little RGB splitting effect. If we come back into and we just let this, I'm gonna take that marker off by pressing the M key again and remove marker. I'm just gonna let this uh, cache real quick. Okay, now that that's cached and rendered inside the screen, I'm gonna go ahead and play it. All right, so if this if this was what we were going for, you can go ahead and turn the video off, but um, I wanna do a few more things to this. And in order to do, now that looks interesting and that might be an effect that you're going for, but there's one thing that you can do to add some kind of like motion blur to it. Uh, if you actually just come into the transform node and you come over to the settings, you can actually click on the motion blur tab inside of each of the nodes and that's gonna add an interesting motion blur. And you can change the quality and the shutter angle. The shutter angle is just gonna make it more blurry. So just kind of play with the settings and, and what you're comfortable with. And now if we come back over here and we take a look at what we got now, all right, so that's definitely cool. Um, and it's hitting right with our beat. In the sample video, I actually I changed the composite mode over to exclusion, just because I thought that was really cool. Uh, you'll, you can't do this with black text because it won't have anything to invert, um, but you can do it uh, if your text is white. So if you're kind of going for that effect, it looks really cool when it's all done up. Yeah, and it's, it's just kind of a neat effect. and and. I find like the larger the text, um, the better this will work. Let's say, let's say we actually, instead of doing that, maybe we wanna just take this footage here. Let's go ahead and just kind of move this fusion clip out of the way, take this boy image, and we're just gonna right click on it and create a new fusion clip. And then now, let's come back over to this fusion clip here real quick, and we're just gonna take Let's take this whole node structure. No, let's take it just from right here. Command C, come back over here, come to this fusion clip and go into here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just make a little bit of room. Click on this, Command V. All right, let's bring this over here like so. And we're just gonna disconnect this into the background. Come back over here, it's gonna be input. All right. 
All right, I'll come back over here, let it cache. Okay, so you're not limited to just text, right? You can use any piece of footage. Um, and one thing we will have to do is you'll notice that the, the outlines here need to be either enlarged or tiled. But honestly, it's a cool effect. You could use it as a transition. Uh, you, could, you could turn it into a glitch. I mean, you can do whatever you want, really. Um, if we want to come back into the Fusion tab, so actually, if you come over here to edges and you just click on edges, you can actually um, you can mirror it. Come to each of these and just hit the uh, mirror. And now come into this. And you notice that that completely solved the discoloration on the side there. And now you got a pretty cool glitch effect going. All right, so that pretty much wraps this up. Um, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like and subscribe and uh, hit that little bell notification. If you have any comments, just go ahead and drop them down below and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.